It's You Had to Ask, the show where I answer your questions, and this week my first question comes from Mark Arangis, who says, I wasn't going to ask anything until you brought up Jesus and slavery. And slavery, much like homophobia, is something most people, even atheists, do not attribute to Jesus because he never said anything about it. But I would argue he was probably a homophobe and didn't mind slavery exactly because he said nothing about it. For example, if everyone around you, Steve, was a racist and a homophobe and you never spoke out against it, wouldn't it be safe to assume you don't have a problem with it? Son of God or not, Jesus was a very religious Jew from the Middle East in what might as well have been ancient times. Being pro-gay would have been incredibly progressive of him. And seeing how he never said anything about it, while I don't agree, I can't blame Christians at all for interpreting the Bible as homophobic. Thoughts? I agree with you. I think the homophobic, misogynistic, slavery-tolerating reading of the Bible is a, a pretty easy one to get to, is a fairly obvious interpretation of that text, unfortunately. And yes, I definitely agree with you that if a person is part of a culture where the prevailing attitudes are extremely homophobic or racist or misogynistic or uh, finding nothing wrong with slavery, that you can assume if that person has not spoken out against those things that they must be okay with those things. Uh, silence equals consent. It's all well and good to have a, a quiet internal opposition to injustice in your society, but if you never speak out about it, if you never translate it into at least words or better yet action, then your internal quiet private opposition is completely worthless. It might make you feel better, but it doesn't do anything to help anyone or to change the circumstances to which you are quietly privately objecting. So silence equals consent. And I am completely in agreement with you. If we take the biblical text, the New Testament depiction of Jesus to be accurate of uh, a real person, then Jesus is complete silence on things like homophobia and his, his tacit approval or at least tolerance of slavery has to be taken as evidence that he didn't have a problem with those things. And yet it's a real shame if we assume that Jesus was a real person and we assume as Christians do that Jesus was the Son of God and he was here to be our great moral teacher and to call us to a higher moral life, it's pretty damning that he chose to say nothing about the rampant prejudices and intolerance and injustice of his own society, not only for the sake of the people living in that society when he was alive, but also for the untold future generations who would look to him as a role model. Patrick Dodds, Steve, I know you're lukewarm about the show, but I have to know, what's your favorite episode of Batman the Animated Series and why? Mine is almost got him. It's filled with great humor, great interplay amongst Batman's rogues gallery, and it's just a clever tribute to the more innocent times of the caped crusader. The favorite episode of Batman the Animated Series is probably Baby Doll, which had the villain who was an actress who had the condition that kept her from aging, so she remained with the appearance of a young child, even though she grew into adulthood and she was a, a child star on a sitcom. And then after the sitcom was canceled, like her whole life fell apart and she eventually turned to crime and started, you know, kidnapping the, uh, the members of her former TV family to bring them back together. And, uh, the end of that episode is just wrenching is just one of the best scenes. I think that that show ever did. And you're right. I am very lukewarm on Batman, the animated series. I am not a, a great lover of it. Like many of my fellow Batman fans are, I don't think that it is, uh, as intelligent and sophisticated as a lot of its more ardent defenders say it is. Um, but it definitely had its moments and baby doll. That episode I think is one of its very highest moments. It, and especially in terms of its writing and its subtlety and the maturity of its presentation. Um, I thought it was a really, really strong episode. So I would say Baby Doll is my favorite Batman the Animated Series episode. Uh, honorable mentions would probably go to Robin's Reckoning, the two-parter that uh, told the animated series version of Dick Grayson's Robin origin story. That was really good. Um, the first Joker episode that I think they aired when the show was on first, I remember this episode airing at the end of the first week because the show originally aired on weekday afternoons. Um, Joker's Favor, that was a pretty good episode. Um, 
And there, there are a handful of Heart of Ice. Of course, everybody says Heart of Ice, the first Mr. Freeze episode. Uh, a really, really good episode. There, there, there are a handful of shows in, in the series that, uh, are, that stand out as being really, really strong. Um, but if I had to pick one, I would say Baby Doll. I think Baby Doll has always been my favorite since the first time I saw it. Cyborg Satter. Steve, we all know religion can create war. What are your opinions on how religion brings people together? Religion is actually really great at bringing people together, but the problem is that it brings people together into particular groups, and then it very often fails at convincing the members of the group of the importance of treating those outside the group just as good as they treat those inside the group. Uh, within the in-group of the religion, it's fantastic at bringing people together. It forms incredibly strong bonds of community and friendship and family. Uh, but then when it comes time to interact with people in another group, in an out group, members of another religion, or sometimes even members of another church that might follow the same general religion but are just followers of another church, uh, it can get messy. And the more different the religious faiths are from each other that the two groups have, the more difficult it can be. So, you know, uh, even though there might be some uh, interdenominational strife among Christians, Christians will get along better with each other than, say, Christians and Muslims, or Christians and Jews, or Muslims and Jews, etc. So, uh, that to me is the challenge. But yeah, religion in, in certain contexts can be a wonderful force to, to bring people together and create communities and, and create a sense of shared responsibility among people, which is so important. Uh, and when they then, when, when religious followers, when religious folks then learn to turn those values of community and togetherness and shared responsibility and charity and kindness and love uh, outside to people who are in perceived out groups, as well as to people who are within their own group, then it becomes a wonderful thing. Um, but a lot of the, the religious strife that we have experienced throughout the centuries and that we still experience in much of the world today is due to the inability or the unwillingness of religious folks to do that. They're willing to, to treat their, their fellow followers of their religion, their fellow church members, what have you, as, as brethren, as family, as loved ones, as people deserving of, of kindness and charity and respect, uh, but then they don't afford that same treatment to people outside the group. Uh, if we could figure out how to get folks to do that, we'd have a lot of these problems solved. Troubleshooter 125. So, CBS, Paramount get all bent at the production company of the fan film Star Trek Axanar. Then the lawsuit is supposedly lifted, and then CBS, Paramount come up with guidelines for Star Trek fan flicks, which effectively ground anything resembling Axanar, Star Trek Continues, and most, if not all, the other efforts to bring independent Star Trek productions to YouTube and elsewhere. Granted, CBS Paramount own the brand, and they can do as they please, but aren't they getting a bit anal here? I can see both sides of this. I am a huge fan of Star Trek fan films, especially Star Trek Continues. I think Star Trek Continues is just so impressive and so much fun and so cool as a Star Trek fan, especially a fan of the classic series as I am. I just love Star Trek Continues so much. Um, and their most recent episode, Come Not Between the Dragons, is the best thing they've ever done. It is just outstanding. I can't recommend it highly enough. But I completely get what Paramount's problem was with Axanar in particular. Um, Axanar has uh, held multiple crowdfunding campaigns, has raised tens of thousands of dollars for a production that still has not materialized. Uh, Axanar at one point was selling, uh, as a part of their fundraiser, was selling coffee, Axanar coffee, that included uh, CBS Paramount uh, intellectual property on, on the, the, the coffee bags. And the producers of Action are claimed that they weren't using CBS intellectual property because they weren't putting, you know, uh, established Star Trek characters on their coffee. They were using just their original Action Art characters, but they were using Star Trek fonts. They were using Star Trek graphics. Some of the characters uh, on the coffee were Klingons or were wearing Star Trek uniforms. Like they were obviously using 
elements of Star Trek to put on their coffee to market it that they could then sell to raise money for their production, which is one of the cardinal rules that CBS Paramount always said before they introduced these much stricter guidelines. They always said, hey, you know what? We're going to be cool about it. Do whatever you want. Just don't make any money off it. You cannot make money. You cannot profit on your use of our intellectual property. And Axanar, I think, crossed that line and has very clearly been profiting by using uh, CBS Paramount Star Trek intellectual property. So that, that kind of ruined it for everybody. And it sucks because, I, I yeah, those the new guidelines do seem to prohibit something like Star Trek Continues from going forward. Uh, it seems like Star Trek Continues will be finished, will not be able to, to make any more episodes, which is a real shame because, as I just said, I love it. I think it's tremendous. Um, but I can see why CBS Paramount chose to put its foot down. I really think... And, and look, the, the Axanar thing looked cool, too. When I saw the trailer and the, the sort of a promotional film that they made for it, Axanar looked pretty cool. Like, I totally would have watched it if it had been allowed to materialize. But I think the way they raised their funds and the way they went about their campaign and, and their production was in clear violation of the informal rules that Paramount had laid out for fan films for a very long time and resulted in them coming down with these much harsher guidelines that, that basically rules out all of this other stuff. So I think Axanar kind of shot itself in the foot and shot a lot of other fan productions in the foot as well uh, with its conduct. So it sucks as a fan of Star Trek fan films, but I, I get why Paramount decided to do this. I really do. Carlisle the Cinephile. Hey Steve, I have a much heavier question than the ones that I usually ask. I've had a really difficult couple of months and have been struggling with depression as a result of it. I've been dealing with some very stressful and unpleasant things in my personal life, and I've been finding it harder and harder to keep it together. I've been reaching out to people in my life who are close to me, but it hasn't really helped, and it's beginning to affect my performance at work and my relationships. Have you ever gone through a period like this in your own life? And if so, how did you deal with it? Do you have any advice? I wish I had better advice for you. I don't think I can advise you from personal experience on this because even though there have been periods in my life where I have been melancholy, um, I don't know if I've ever experienced what I would call depression with a capital D or what I guess you might call clinical depression. Like I've never, I've never felt like I had to go seek professional help. I've never been in such a depression for such a, a sustained amount of time that it threatened work or relationships or anything like that. If there's any way you can have access to a mental health professional, go see a therapist, go see a counselor um, to help you talk through some of the issues that you're going through, I would highly recommend that. Um, because I have seen with people in my life, people I have been close to, that it can make a very huge difference to have someone to talk to who knows what they're doing, who is a professional, who is a counselor, who is a therapist. That's the only thing I can really recommend to you. Uh, as far as your, your outlook or, or motivation or you know, your, your mental state, again, I, I guess I can sort of appeal to uh, a comparison to physical sickness. At the times in my life when I've been very physically sick, uh, what has kept me going <laughs> is the, the hope that and really not not necessarily the certainty but the expectation that i am not going to feel this way forever that the illness will eventually be treated will 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 go away i will be my former healthier self again and that hope and that confidence in that future you know uh, was a big help to me. And maybe that can be a help to you in your depression. If you can remember a time in your life when you weren't depressed like this, when you didn't feel like this, when you felt good, when you felt at least normal, think about that and then try to shift that forward and hold on to the expectation that you will feel that way again, that the feelings you have right now, the depression you are going through will not last forever. It will pass. There will be good days still ahead and I, maybe that would help i hope that would help too if you could if you could think on that and focus on that but i would highly recommend if at all possible to try and find a therapist or a counselor who can help you much better than a well-meaning dumbass on a youtube video Just me. joe mcclory i think i liked your last atheist reads better than the others you've done 
The book was different, and it was nice to see you pointing out that you agreed with the author that, yeah, some atheists tend to let their biases color how they view Christianity, and they may unfairly bash it more than it deserves and refuse to acknowledge the good it has done, before, of course, pointing out that he was not being as reasonable when upselling Christianity. Did you find that reading the book did have you addressing your own personal biases and actually affecting you some? And was the book more or less bothersome than most books of apologetics for starting to show nuanced arguments and then seeming to ignore them to upsell Christianity? It did uh, force me to confront some of my own biases. It did not begin that process, but it continued a process of me working through and changing my attitudes toward not just Christianity, but religion in general that has been going on for a while now. I am coming more to a place now where I have a more complex understanding of things, where there are some things about religion that are very bad and that need to be addressed and that need to be opposed uh, if they are, a, if there's an attempt made to impose them on other people. Um, and there are things about religion that are very good. You know, I mentioned in the answer to an earlier question, religion has a wonderful ability to bring people together within their in-group, to create a great feeling of solidarity and community, and that's a really good thing. Religion isn't the only thing that does that, but religion is very good at doing that. Uh, by the same token, religion is also very good at uh, turning groups against each other, or causing people to view members of an out-group as, as inferior, or as enemies, or as hostile, or as something that must be resisted and destroyed. Religion is not the only thing that does that. But unfortunately, religion is also very good at that. So there are good things and there are bad things about religion. And yeah, there were times when it was frustrating. There were definitely times when it was frustrating because Hart is a really intelligent guy. You can tell by his writing. You can tell by his the attitudes that he expresses through the book that he is an intelligent guy. He is a lot more thoughtful and a lot more insightful than most of the other authors that I have read. He is completely capable of acknowledging the shortcomings of Christianity, of acknowledging the complexity of Christianity's role in history to a point, but he always reaches that point where he stops and, as you say in your question, he has to start upselling Christianity. And it's like, how can you have, how, how do you reconcile that cognitive dissonance? How can you, uh, how, how can you have a pretty complex nuanced view of Christianity on one hand, and then sometimes within the space of the same page start arguing that Christian, that, that these universal human values are actually Christian values, and if not for Christianity, we wouldn't have them. It's, it's mind-boggling, and it's really frustrating. Uh, and that was a feeling that I felt a lot when I was reading that book and trying to prepare my responses to it. But that, 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 that was, that's just the way that series went, and I'm really glad you enjoyed it. I hope other people who, liked, who watched it enjoyed it. If anybody watching this hasn't watched that one yet and you decide to watch An Atheist Reads, Atheist Delusions, uh, I hope you enjoy it, too, because I was glad to do it. I, I think it wound up being one of my favorite Atheist Reads series, too. So, end of rambling answer to last main segment question. Cue the thunderclap. The lightning round. Rapid fire questions. Glib and adequate answers. Lucas Hackett, one angry brony. Steve, who do you think Dick Grayson looks good as, Robin or Nightwing? For an extra bonus question, who would you ship Nightwing with? Batgirl, Starfire, or Huntress? Um, I like him as Nightwing because I also like some of the other Robins. Like, I love Tim Drake as Robin. I grew up reading Batman in the 90s. So Tim Drake is always sort of going to be my Robin, and I like Dick more as Nightwing. And who would I ship him with? Batgirl, of course. I think Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon are one of my comic book dream couples. So I would go Nightwing and Batgirl. Jeff Killer Heisenberg, dear Stevie Steve, bane of the bigoted, champion of those who are yet to win, defender of online decency, my liege, I have a question. Is it morally wrong to masturbate if a pet is in the room? If not then why do I make them leave? Well, here's the thing. Is the pet already in the room when you come in and start masturbating? I don't think that's okay. If the cat or the dog or whatever is already in the room and you walk into the room and just start jerking off, I think that's very rude. I don't think that's acceptable. But if you're in the middle of it and then the cat or the dog comes walking in and they see what you're doing and they're cool with it, as long as you're cool with them being cool with it, I think that's cool. I mean, I don't think that's cool. It's a little weird, but I don't think any 
moral transgression has taken place. The, the animal has seen what you're doing and is clearly accepting of it because they haven't turned and left. So at that point, I think you're morally in the clear. Old Comic One. Not long ago, I visited family members. Even though they know I'm an atheist, I went with them to Sunday Mass, mainly so they wouldn't have to come back and get me to go to lunch. When was the last time you found yourself at a church service? Um, I've been to church, like for church functions, a few times in the last several years. I, I went, I've, I've been to a couple of weddings uh, uh, over the last couple years, and of course my wife and I got married in a church. Um, but the last time I was in church for like a proper service, like a Sunday service, it's probably been 12, 13, 14 years ago. It's been a very long time. Yellow Lantern. Hello, Steve. Are you a fan of the original Ghostbusters movie? If so, what do you think of Ghostbusters 2? I think it's unfairly maligned, while completely unnecessary and not as good as the first. It had plenty of fun moments, especially Lewis defending the team in court. Uh, yeah, well, I am a big fan of the original Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters 2 I don't think is very good. I, I do agree with people who say it's just a bad movie. Uh, but it definitely has its moments. It definitely has uh, some really funny moments. And one of my favorite moments in the movie is, and I've said this a bunch of times, is uh, Egon's uh, slinky joke when Dana says, or no, it wasn't Dana, I think it was, it was Ray. Ray said, you know, Egon, didn't you have any toys when you were a kid? And Egon said, I had part of a slinky, but I straightened it. That, that line has always killed me. Kevin Logan. Who? You know who. The fella with the celebrated swing. Radical Bacon. What do you think of coloring books that are aimed for adults? I personally find them soothing and don't entirely get the flack they get for being childish. Well, it's probably the same people who are pissing and moaning about people playing Pokemon Go. They don't get why something's interesting. They don't get why people like something, so they just have to shit on it. They can't just keep their misery and their awfulness to themselves. Someone's enjoying something that they don't understand how they could enjoy, so they have to shit on it because that's what they do, because they're awful garbage people. I wouldn't worry about them. If you like coloring in adult coloring books, I think you should go for it, and people who have a problem with it or look at you kind of weird about it uh, can fuck off. <laughs> how about that? Uh, Morally Gray. Hey, Steve, just wondering what platform you gather these questions from. Twitter, YouTube. Most of the questions come from YouTube comments, specifically the comments left on the previous video. That's why at the end of the video, I always say leave a comment and ask me your question for next time. But I have occasionally collected questions from people who have tweeted at me or sent me a message or commented on Facebook. I mean, if, if it's a good enough question and it is clearly intended for the You Had to Ask video and I see it, there's always a chance that it'll, that it'll make it in. Natalie Kirk. Hey, yes, Steve. Every time I start feeling good about the culture I live in, I see someone being bullied off the internet by angry boys. Can you please place Adi in front of the camera so I may kiss his little nose and thus feel better? Just one second. Be right back. Adi. Adi Kins. Come here, boobies. Hello. First of all, Adi is a girl, so you can't kiss his nose, but you can kiss her nose, and here she is. Here you go. Check it out. Somebody wants to kiss your nose, look. <laughs> there you go. Somebody wants to kiss your cute little kitty nose. Isn't that sweet? You can just bring happiness and joy to people. I think that's wonderful. There you go. Sorry to disturb you. I know you were taking a nap. Don't blame me. Blame Natalie Kirk. Blackie Comics. Hey, Steve. How's it going? I have a question. Who's your favorite Star Wars character and why? My favorite Star Wars character is Han Solo because it doesn't work without him, or at least without a Han-like character. That's one of the reasons why I think the prequels uh, did not turn out so well, because the prequels did not have a Han Solo-type character to basically, you know, roll his eyes and make wisecracks at the whole thing. I think Han being there, not being a Jedi, not really feeling the whole Force thing was essential to the success of the original Star Wars movies. Uh, so Han's my favorite character. Malevolent Divinity. Looking at the trailers for Suicide Squad, I'm getting a feeling, an interesting feeling. A feeling that this movie lacks all the things that made the recent poor DC movies kind of suck. You gonna give it a shot, or has BVS <laughs> murdered your inner child? I'm not going to see Suicide Squad after Batman v Superman. I swore off DC movies from that point forward. 
uh, with the possible future exception of a solo uh, Affleck Batman movie, if that really looked good. Um, so no, I will not be seeing Suicide Squad. It's not that it murdered my inner child. It's just I'm tired of going into a theater to see movies that I know are going to be fucking awful. And honestly, I don't think the Suicide Squad trailers make it look that great. It doesn't look like a good movie to me. I hope it is. I hope if you go see it, I hope that it rocks your fucking world. But I, I just am not going to go see it. Duvunder Barbar, what do you think about Trump picking Pence as a running mate? I think that's the answer to people who kept insisting that after he got the nomination, Trump would run more toward the center. Nah, -uh. he's running even further to the right. So there you go, people who keep keep holding out hope. Well, maybe Trump won't be so bad. He's just appealing to the conservatives to get the nomination, and then he'll run toward the center. Have you watched the convention? I don't think that's what he's doing. Night 6831. Hi, Steve. Start new Star Trek question. The Star Trek movies seem to completely ignore Enterprise, Voyager, and DS9. Can you think of any logical reason for why those three Star Treks never had a movie of their own? Well, I just... I, I don't think any of those shows, as much as I love Deep Space Nine, I don't think any of those shows was popular enough uh, to really warrant its own film series. And also, I don't think that's the natural progression. I mean, just because there were classic Trek movies and Next Generation movies doesn't mean that that's the next step for any Star Trek show. Like, oh, you, you get, you, you know, you, you finish your TV run and then you get your movies. I don't think that was ever the plan. I don't think anybody ever thought, oh, we're going to do Deep Space Nine movies after season seven, or we're going to do Voyager movies after the show's over. I just, I don't think that was ever part of the plan. Hey, that's it for the lightning round. That's it for all the questions. Before I go, I'm going to give a shout out to a very deserving individual, and the individual receiving the shout out this week is the writer, the author, the creator of an awesome blog called According to Matthew. It is the blog of Matthew Facciani. I was really, really happy to be able to meet Matthew very briefly uh, the night of the Reason Rally. We shook hands and chatted for a few minutes. He's a really, really super nice guy. He talks about politics and social justice type stuff and is just a really, really wonderful, humane, progressive voice in the atheist secular community, someone who uh, deserves an audience, deserves to have people reading his work, and is someone that I really, really enjoy reading and, and really look to as uh, one of the great bright spots in our community at the moment. So Matthew Facciani, and according to Matthew, is the blog. Check out that blog. I don't think you'll be sorry that you did. I also want to tell you, as I always do, to check out the Let Me Listen podcasts. And I don't think you'll be sorry you listen to these either because they're pretty awesome. These are the creation of my very good friend Jason Harding, who is also the creator of Opinionville here on YouTube that you should check out. But the Let Me Listen podcasts are a series of podcasts uh, including Let Me Finish, which Jason co-hosts with Finite Atticus, American Monsters and How to Destroy Them, an awesome improv comedy podcast that I have guest starred on a couple of times and that is currently in the middle of its second season. New episodes of American Monsters are going up and you should definitely be listening to those. Um, Cinema Shack, which has just been sort of folded into the Let Me Listen podcast family, which is an awesome movie review podcast. Um, upcoming in the next couple of weeks, I'm not sure when it's going to be debuting, but Jason is also starting a new movie review podcast uh, called Cinetific that you'll have to check out. That looks at the scientific plausibility of, of uh, scenes in movies that I really think is going to be a lot of fun. And finally, last but certainly not least, there is Late Seating, the movie review show that Jason co-hosts with me, where we watch a classic film, a film that has a certain reputation for being either really good or really bad. We give it a fresh review, we summarize the plot, we make fun of it, and then we decide whether or not the movie deserves its reputation as being either a classic or being an infamous bomb. And this week we have a new episode of Late Seating going up, and the movie we have chosen to review in honor of the new Star Trek movie opening this week is possibly the most widely panned Star Trek movie ever made, Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Listen to the new episode of Late Seating. Listen to me and Jason review Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. I think you'll like it. It's a really, really fun episode. You can listen to that. You can listen to all the past episodes of Late Seating and all the episodes of all the excellent Let Me Listen podcasts by going to lemmelistenpodcasts.com. Thank you so much. That's it for me, everybody. I'm out of here. I want to remind you before I go, as always, to please leave a comment on this video. Ask me your question for next time. You can ask me anything about anything. Nothing is too serious. 
nothing is too silly. I will answer as many of your questions as I possibly can in the next video. So until then, take care, everybody. Hey, folks, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.